Hi everyone, welcome back to our truck camper renovation series. In this episode, we're going to go through the steps required to get this camper securely mounted and permanently mounted to this super high Kodiak truck. We're going to make a nice sturdy strong bed support that's going to hold this camper in the bed through all kinds of terrain. Make nice and sturdy tie down points that we can secure these fast gun tie downs to and reinforce the dually swing out brackets so they aren't flexible anymore to work better with our 18 inch lift kit and also space them out another inch and a half to work with the width of our huge super single wheels. Follow along. Today we are building the support in the bed of the truck that the camper is going to sit on. Um, I had, you probably saw previously in um, I think our will it fit video that I built a temporary one out of wood just to get the height you know figure it out to make sure it was right um, trial fit and uh, the one that I built was a good height so I'm gonna basically duplicate that in steel um, I'm not really too confident about long term with wood you know movement and stuff so we're gonna make one out of steel um, I sort of have a rough idea of what I want to do. Um, I'm not exact yet. It'll like anything I do it kind of changes as it goes usually, but I'm going to use two inch square angle. Uh, it's one eighth thick. It's going this will be this will be the bottom piece and then the top piece is going to sit the same. I'll have some uh, one by one square tubing as upright supports, a couple angles here and there, um, the, a, a um, three quarter inch piece of plywood is going to sit on this channel all the way around for the camper to sit on. I'm actually going to put three quarter inch upright also so the camper can sit up against wood instead of steel on the edges. I'm going to give myself probably an inch of extra space side to side for getting the camper in so it's not super tight but then it won't give it a lot of room to move around when we're driving also so it'll be kind of locked into that area um, I'm also going to I'm probably gonna build four like this that are gonna go across the box one in the front one just in front of the wheel well one just behind the wheel well and one at the back the back one is going to support the box sides because they're fiberglass and they need to be supported. There's actually a caution sticker that says don't drive this vehicle with the tailgate removed because that gives the box strength. So we're going to replace the strength of the tailgate actually probably and then some with this metal frame. Um, I'm also going to do some uprights probably with the square tubing on uh, probably four locations down each side, one at each support that a square tubing is going to rise up to the level of the box side and then I'll have a, probably a square tubing going this way that I can bolt down storage boxes to. That's how it's going today. Going to be lots of metal cutting. Got the big MIG welder out and um, we'll just tack things together and then get them final welded. Follow along, we'll get this done. Okay, so I'll probably still put a little cross bracing, but there's one uh, mount made up. One of four that are gonna go in the box. So get them good and welded all the way around all four corners. And then to the uh, bottom angle up the side. So really we have some pretty good diagonal stability also with these welds up the sides and across the top. So we're pretty strong. I don't know if uh, angle bracing is necessary, but um, when you're not an engineer, you just build it way stronger than it has to be, right? So we'll stick a brace on each side there. And uh, I think uh, from my engineering brain, that should be plenty strong enough. And uh, we'll make a bunch of those. So we got one brace done. Um, 
This is between me and you though, don't tell anybody about uh, that angle cut because nobody will see it once it's put together. So we got that all done, three upright braces, two angles, and um, then this is going to sit in the bed like that. Well, things are coming along. I'll uh, weld this into place and then I'll show you guys where I'm at. So I got a front support with a good cross or crisscrossies like I showed you guys earlier. And then the second support, I did the same thing basically. And the third and fourth support, I'm trying to leave open. So these angles down the side, the camper's four feet wide for six feet of length. Then it moves out to the full width of the box back here. It's another 10 inches, I believe. So it goes from 48 to 58 inches. So I'm going to have an angle out here and then I'll tie these in together. So, uh, I did quite a bit of angle bracing side to side. You can see I got the 45s up there with the one inch square tubing. Um, back here I wanted to leave it open to give me uh, access to put things in there. So I just did little corner gus gussets. I think all I'm lacking really now is um, angle bracing front to back. Really the front kind of goes up against the cab but still um, I'll probably put a little bit of support that way just so it's not flexing and um, then coming back I need some support. I'm going to put these uh, in lengthwise between the two here. That'll tie them together so they'll be tied together top and bottom and um, also distribute load across bed supports on both sides. Same as I did on the back here and I just still need to tack those in. I just have them sitting in place right now. I'll get them tacked in and then uh, take them out to weld it. Alright, the structure of the uh, bed support spacer is done. All the, the structure of it anyway, I still need to add some uprights that are going to go I have a measurement written in my book, but I think it was about eight inches, eight and a half inches beyond the top ang top angle edge. That's going to come up to support my side boxes. So I'll probably do probably a double run. So they're spaced apart as much as I can of uh, square tubing and then one across the top. So I can bolt my boxes down to that. So there we have it, Marianne's been uh, painting the rack or the support with uh, a brush and a nice thick oil based paint for metal. Um, there's a couple little spots in welds and stuff that are hard to get with the brush so I'm going to just kind of touch up, soak them down a bit with the thinner spray paint. And uh, we're pretty much ready to put her in the truck, I just uh, got to put the plywood on here so I'll get that done now. And uh, we'll probably put a coat of paint on the plywood too. Last piece of the puzzle. So we'll get this one screwed down and then uh, might be ready for paint. So we got our uh, side box supports just a tiny bit above the edge of the bed and storage underneath. I'm going to add a hole here into the box. I'm going to put a, uh, um, a nut cert in the box there so I can bolt into it to support the box sides. And uh, I think that's about it. 
Then we can bolt this sucker down. Once that's in, bolt it down to the bottom. We got four half inch bolts that go down through uh, two, one hole on each side at the back and one at each side at the front. Spacers in, rubber mats in, bolted down to the box, wires run for the lights. I think the next step is to put the camper in. So now that we have the super singles on the truck, um, we did a rough measurement outside to outside and it looks like we're like maybe a little bit too wide to get between the jacks. Um, it seems like the distance between the jack posts is okay, but then the bases of the original jacks, which are now 18 inches off the ground, um, are a little bit too narrow. So I could put one and put a front tire on the back or flip one of the back ones to squeeze it through and all that and fiddling around, but I need to reinforce my uh, jack extension brackets anyway. They're a little bit weak. Um, one's been bent by the previous owner, so I'm going to beef those up anyway, do some welding there. So I think I might as well make some spacers and space those jacks out a little bit more while I'm at it. Right now I'm just going to get a accurate measurement of what the actual width is instead of just going across with a measuring tape. Just do a good mark on the ground on each side, then I'll move the truck and measure across. Ninety-seven and a half. If it does fit between there, it'll be a squeaker. Let's have a look. Yeah. So between the posts were ninety-seven and five eighths, and then we give up about an inch and a quarter on each side. So there's two and a half. So we're 95 and an eighth. Yeah, we need to add at least an inch and a half on each side. So I think, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is add a uh, inch and a half square tubing. I guess I could either be on this side or this side, doesn't really matter. And uh, this side will bring it a bit more forward. This side will bring it a bit more out. Don't think it really matters either way. So we'll figure that out and get them made up. So here's my plan with the uh, jacks to strengthen them up. I'm going to put some pieces of flat bar like this. And uh, I'll do three of them, one there, one in the middle, and one on the top. And so that'll kind of give it a sort of a box effect. Still give me room to put my nuts in on this side. I just have to watch. I don't, uh, I don't weld too hot on here because that's a hinge. I don't want to stick it to the pin, and that's going to create a whole bunch of extra work for me. But uh, first thing, I have to put the jack back on and get a winch uh, under at the bottom of it to twist this bracket straight again. This one's not bad. The one on the other side is even more bent. You can see how it's leaning back there. It's got a pretty good twist to it. I think I'm getting it pretty straight there. I just put a ratchet strap to hold the top back. And then I just put a little bit of weight on the jack and hammered the bottom forward. I think I might give it another tap. Oh, I see it did move back, yeah. Okay, I'll give it a couple more taps and um, then I'm ready to weld. I got my welder out here and I got a one piece of uh, flat bar clamped in place so uh, we'll give that another straighten and give her a couple tacks. One thing to keep in mind if you're doing this, um, this still hinges closed and you got to watch you don't get too far to the outside edge or you won't close and your thing will drop down. It'll be not quite far enough in or it'll stress the pin. And then that won't want to drop. I actually had to do a little bit of 
extra grinding there so it didn't touch when it was closed. It was touching a little bit. And uh, on my flat bars on the other side, I cut them at three and a quarter, where I cut these at three and a half. So I'll get the weld a little bit farther away. And that should work out a little better. So keep that in mind if you're doing that. This one's a little more bent, so I hooked up the winch to the side by side and just pulled her back and still holding the top with uh, the strap. So we got her nice and straight. We'll tack those plates on. Pull that big's a challenge for my little drill press, but that way I can get my socket in there to tighten the bolts on opposite sides. The uh, jacks are back on the front of the camper now. The um, reinforcement plates are in to stop the twisty. And um, I made these one and a half inch um, brackets out of square tubing and bolted them in between. Um, that was kind of a tedious job with all the hole drilling and I had to weld some bolts in there to be able to bolt them in. And um, then repainted everything. I touched up all the paint, the peeling paint and the rust. So that was a little time consuming, but they're back in there now. This I had to offset the holes a little bit also so I could get through to put the, uh, the bolts in. And um, this gave me another inch of lift. So on top of the 18 down there, or about an inch and a half. So we got about a 19 and a half lift kit on the jacks now. And uh, we're sticking out an inch and a half more. So we've gained from between the uh, narrowest point, three inches total. So theoretically, the truck should fit under now. We're gonna work on getting the, the, uh, the camper in the truck and tied down and then trial run for a little drive and um, make sure everything works out. All right, it's time to start preparing this unit to put it in the back of the truck. Uh, I'm gonna lift it up off of the uh, support stand, get the bottom panels put back on. Maybe we can show you back when I took them off when we first unloaded it from the Dodge, just basically to explore the insulation situation down there and how the heating ducts were run and so on. I thought maybe I would need to access it to run some wires or something during the renovation, but I didn't. But uh, now I know what's going on down there. A little bit of changes to the heating ducts and we'll uh, put it back together. What's inside under the floor of a Bigfoot camper? Here it is. I don't know if this is original. Self Fort 2000, no 200. This is a uh, the heavy duty polystyrene, extruded polystyrene. Uh huh. That's where the mice keep the toilet paper. So that is the fresh water tank, I guess. Yeah. All right, I got the next panel off, or that whole panel off. So that's the water tank we saw from the front. That sucker goes all the way back here. So that's the 50 gallon fresh water tank. It's huge, man. So we got a black tank. No, we got a gray tank. And then back here is the black tank. So she's going up. Uh, seems considerably more stable than before. Even better, I'm getting used to it. It's still a little freaky, gotta admit. We gotta go about eight more inches. That should do it. Now, hopefully the tires fit between these things with the extra three inches of width. Marianne says I'm a good backer-upper. Look at that. We got uh, half an inch to spare. Maybe 
three quarters of an inch to spare. So with the uh, inch and a half extension on the um, jacks, you can see they still don't even stick out really much past the edge of the camper. Pretty even with what like a door would stick out. So the inch and a half spaces it out actually, but when it's folded it really doesn't make much difference. It's, uh, it's still in there. So now that it's in the truck we need to fashion down some tie downs. We have the uh, fast guns that were on the other truck. I did have a plan to uh, put a square tubing mount underneath attached to the frame. Um, I had it all figured out in my head what I was going to do. And then the other day I realized that these steps are like solid steel, like super heavy duty tied into the frame. So uh, I think I'm, I bought these big, what are they, half inch, I think. Yeah, half inch eye bolts. I'm going to... Put an eye bolt through, it's a big steel plate bracket down here, probably there, and um, I'm going to weld the eye closed so it can't open, which these are way bigger than what was on the other truck anyway, but I'm extra cautious like that. And um, I'm going to put these eyes in there, and we'll mount to those, that'll be good for the front. And then the back, I think, I got this solid steel bumper here. I think I'm going to put another eye, probably with some big flat washers, a little double nut, and um, mount an eye right there, and we can tie down to that. Should work perfect and easy. So I put a bit of rubber hose on the, uh, the eye bolt here to... Um, if we're ever running it with the camper off, which I don't know if we will, but um, it won't rattle around so much. So now I have my fast gun extended. I put it to the maximum, 43 inches is the maximum length. And then I turned it in four turns just to be 100% sure it's safe because I got to put an extension anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So I got to figure out what I'm going to need for chain here. So eight lengths of this chain, I think it's three eighths chain maybe. That gives me about 10 inches, and then I can do the fine tuning with the fast gun. Okay, turns out I only needed six links. Got that hooked up. I just need to do my adjustments now and set my preload on the fast link, uh, or the fast gun. I'll uh, get the other side set up and then I'll set those up together. So we just set our fast guns. Like that. That's about a quarter of an inch. Nice. So we got a nice angle going back on there. Nice angle going front on there. Easiest tie down job ever. We're on our test drive. Camper's on the back. So far. The camper hasn't fallen off, <laughs> and no solar panels have fallen off. But we got, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 kilometers in so far. We went to town, got some fuel, and uh, everything seems pretty good. Yeah. Drive nice. <laughs> and um, we're going 100 kilometers an hour, so 60 miles an hour. And uh, 62 maybe, to be exact. And, I don't know, it drives really good. It drives about the same as it does without the camper on it, other than it rides a little smoother. Yeah, it rides way smoother. Got a little bit yeah. more weight on there. Camper doesn't seem to move around too much. Seems pretty good. <laughs> that. He's happy. So since I removed the rear bumper to allow the spare tire to come up closer to the frame so it doesn't stick out so far, I need to redo the tie downs. My uh, fast guns did bolt on with these eye bolts to the rear bumper. 
which we don't have a rear bumper to bolt to anymore. So um, I thought of a few different ways to do it. I've decided to use the existing bumper brackets that were bolted on the old bumper. So I bolted them back on. I actually moved them farther forward though, probably three or four inches. Now I've made some plates. Um, I shall just show you. Okay, so I cut some steel plates. These are gonna bolt to the bumper brackets. There's going to be like that. There's gonna be a two inch square tubing welded on there just above the top bolt, which will hang in a little bit. The shape of this bracket will kind of hide that bumper bracket so it looks a little better. Gives us a lot of length here to weld this tubing to. And um, then I angle cut the end. I'm gonna bolt the eye back in there and uh, we'll see if that's strong enough. One thing I didn't mention about the bumper brackets is because the box on this truck is mounted on a subframe, the subframe is mounted solid over the axle, which I think I've mentioned before. And then it just has, you can see in there, where this bolt is, you can see there's a rubber mount. So the subframe is only rubber mounted in the center at the front and the back which allows the box to move a lot on this vehicle because it's got, uh, it's got a fiberglass box so it doesn't want flex on the fiberglass box too much so the subframe can move separately. The bumper on this actually mounts to the subframe, not to the frame of the truck. So the bumper would move with the box, which looks a little better. And um, really then we're not stressing the camper so much either if, uh, if the frame is twisting a lot, um, and it's gonna pull on the tie downs a lot more if this is mounted to the frame. So I think mounted to the subframe is better. I know up front I'm mounted to the frame. Um, I don't really feel like building mounts to go to the subframe. It'll give it a little bit more stability too. The box moves a lot. Um, I didn't see too much excessive movement in those, so I think we're okay. But I'm going to opt to mount them to the subframe in the back here. And then uh, it'll give us a good amount of movement. And uh, so I'm going to get those, finish assembling those. Um, I got to stick these plates, the plate and the square tubing together with my uh, magic electron exciting machine. So I built these um, tie down brackets, one for each side. I welded them onto one eighth plate, I believe it is. And I had my doubts whether it would have enough torsional strength since the camper tie downs are pulling forward and up. Straight up, I didn't have a doubt, but on the angle, I kind of doubted it and my doubts were correct. Um, it moved a little bit more than I like, so um, I, added i actually had to space it up so it's sitting upside down right now this is the top on the table this was the bottom the brackets that bolt to the old bumper brackets the uh so i spaced it up with a two inch angle and then added a two inch across i had to space it up to clear the spare tire so it just gets over the back of the spare tire and that gives us more than enough strength and i uh, basically built a new rear bumper pretty much so uh we're good, we're strong, getting some paint. As you can see, we now have the new rear bumper and tie down point for the camper installed on the truck, bolted on to the, the old rear bumper mounts, which move with the box. And it's pretty secure and strong, gives us a pretty safe tie down point allows us room for our spare to tuck up in, and we even added some new backup lights. So that's a wrap for this episode. We were able to support the camper on a spacer that gives us adequate cab clearance and strength, provide a safe and sturdy connection between the truck and camper, with the ability to remove the camper when we need to and put it back on safely. If you liked what you saw in this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, and then you won't miss out on our next project. 
And if you'd like to see more behind the scenes content and up-to-date information, check us out on Patreon. We'd really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching. Make super strong. And we're able to if you liked what you saw in this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and then you're... Holy Now we got a plane.